the ACC championships have just finished up. If you haven't seen our prediction video, go check that out. But we're gonna be recapping this whole entire conference tournament. So yeah, let's go into the video. First off, at 125 pounds, we predicted Camacho and Latona would be here uh, in the finals, and they both were. I had Latona coming out here with the win, the young freshman, and it was tied after the third period. Went into overtime just like their match when Virginia Tech won against NC State, um, but no one was able to score in the sudden victory period, so they went into tiebreakers where Latona was able to get a ride out in his 30 seconds. Ended up getting a 2-1 to one win after he got an escape uh, to beat Jacob Camacho. Uh, qualify for the NCAA championships as well as win the ACC championship. 133 pounds, uh, Jared Trombley, Russell's pretty good, but had a loss, I think, to Corbin Myers and ended up taking fourth here. Uh, Louis Hayes of Virginia ended up beating Trombley 3-2 in the third place matchup, but in the finals, uh, it was actually Corbin Myers of VTech going up against Mickey Filippi of Pittsburgh, who a lot of people thought would win this whole entire weight class. Ended up not working out that way as Corbin Myers got a big upset. One here, three to one over Mickey Filippi, about his safe. 41 pounds, it was number eight, Tariq Wilson, and number nine, Zach Sherman. I think a lot of people knew that they would be the ones versing each other in the finals. It was in my predictions video as well, but Wilson in the ACC finals for the third straight year, but finally was an ACC champion after being a runner up in the past two years. Uh, no points in the first period, but after that, he got seven points in the second, he had a takedown and a few uh, near fall points. Um, then he got a 10-1 major decision by the end of the match as he got another takedown and then a riding time point uh, to win his first ACC championship. Then at 149 in a crazy bout, Austin O'Connor, uh, I think he was losing 8-0 to Bryce Andonian of Virginia Tech, but had a crazy comeback, ended up winning the match 10-8 after getting a bunch of takedowns. Um, pretty good comeback match. If you haven't watched it, I would really suggest you to look it up. Uh, it was a pretty crazy win for Austin O'Connor to repeat as an ACC champion. And at 157 pounds, it was number two Hayden Hidley, who everybody thought would make the finals. Going up against Justin McCoy of Virginia Tech, 16 ranked. Um, Hidley actually won this matchup and became a four-timer for the ACC conference, becoming only uh, the fourth wrestler to do it at NC State. Um, pretty crazy statistic and Hidley actually scored all five takedowns in the bout, um, scored one with 10 seconds left as well. Really helped him get team points, got a major decision 12 to three over McCoy. Uh, could potentially be a five timer next year as this year didn't count as eligibility. Um, but yeah, it should be pretty interesting and Hidley wrestled really well. Could be a force to be reckoned with at the NCAA. 165, Mekai Lewis um, was supposed to wrestle here, but he just came, got his bye, and then injury defaulted out of all his matches. Probably due to that injury he got from Jake Wenzel when they wrestled. But Wenzel actually had a good tournament as well. He had a nice win, I think, over Thomas Bullard of NC State. Uh, ended up beating Jake Keating of Virginia in the finals 4-0. Then at 174, it was number 8 ranked Daniel Bullard versus number 14 ranked Clay Lout. A rematch of last year's finals where Lau actually won. But Bullard actually did win here. Had a good win. Had a takedown in overtime as their bout went 2-2 on until a sudden victory where Bullard had a good takedown uh, after 34 or 35 seconds of overtime. So good win by Bullard here. Coming first time ACC champion. 184, perhaps the most interesting um, match of the night. It was number three, Trent Hidley versus number one, Hunter Bowen of Virginia Tech. Um, battle for the number one or number two spot, but Headley did come out on top here. Uh, they both had an escape and regulation. No one scored a takedown, and it was overtime at one to one. Then Hidley had a final takedown um, in like the last 10 seconds of the first period. I ended up winning that matchup three to one, and I think he is right now at number one um, at 184 pounds. So definitely gonna be a weight class to watch at the NCAA Championships. You got Aaron Brooks, you got Trent Hidley, and then you got Hunter Bowen. So definitely would stay tuned to this weight class. And at 197, Nino Bonacorsi of Pittsburgh really just dominated this whole entire weight class despite moving up from a weight like he had last year. I think he wrestled 174 or 184. This year was moving up like 13, 14 pounds, but wrestled really well. Ended up beating J.I.L. of Virginia in the finals 10 to 4, becoming ACC champion in this weight class. Then at heavyweight, uh, usually these bouts are not interesting, to be honest. No offense to anybody who's a heavyweight, but I usually turn my TV off by the time we're at the heavyweight bout. But, I mean, this match was actually pretty interesting. Went into overtime. Both the wrestlers had uh, one escape point. It was one-to-one. -one. No one scored in the sudden victory, but then Deontay Wilson uh, of NC State ended up having a big-time ride out. 
um, end up taking out Hunter Kaka to win two to one in the tiebreakers um, in the win at heavyweight for NC State. That's yeah, grab up our video for today. Uh, NC State did end up winning this tournament. I think they had like 80 something team points while Virginia Tech had like 60. Um, Tech definitely needed to have Mekhi Lewis to really make a run for this tournament, but both teams very, very good and gonna be very strong near the postseason in March. But yeah, that's gonna wrap up our video for today. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, comment down below, and stuff more rest of content like this. Peace.